stop in 15 minutes. So uh, what about 11? Is that OK? OK, so let's look at 11. So I'm on page 4. Good. So that's 11. So we're asked to describe the um, sampling distribution of p hat Assuming that the population size is 25,000, uh, the sample size is 700, and p equals 0.729. Describe the shape of the sampling distribution of uh, p uh, hat. Now, remember, there are a few conditions here. Uh, one condition is uh, the np1 minus p has to be less than or equal to 10. Uh, I'm sorry, of, of course, I'm talking about point n has to be less than or equal to 0.05 of n. So this has to be greater than 10. Greater than or equal to 10, as we know. So there are two conditions here that we have to check, of course. Good. So uh, np, 700 times p, 0.7291 1 minus 0.729, and we have to determine that. And uh, n700, is that less than or equal to 0.05 of 25,000? So 0 0.05 multiplied by 25,000. We know that this is definitely the sample size is 700, 700 is definitely less than or equal to 1250. So the first condition or the second condition doesn't matter, it's fulfilled. Now, this next one, 700 multiplied by 0.729 and times parentheses, don't forget, 1 minus 0.729. And this has to be greater than or equal to 10. If it's not greater than or equal to 10, then we cannot conduct the test or decide, this, this, this is not a test, decide the distribution of p hat. So 138.29. So in that case, we will say that p hat is approximately normal with the same mean, right? And um, in here we have the square root of p, 1 minus p divided by n. That's the standard deviation. So let's determine, so, right, so this is the same mean. So mu of, this is mu of p hat, which is p. And in order to determine this, we have to calculate it. So that's the mean of p hat, which is the square root of uh, 0.729, 1 minus 0.729 divided by 700. So I have to calculate that. Okay, so the square root, careful how you put it in. Yes, I know some sophisticated calculators may not require all the parentheses I put in here, but you may not have a super sophisticated one, so I will put all the necessary parentheses. And divide by 700. Okay, so these parentheses are for the square root. These parentheses are for the numerator. And I should put another set, but this is this times this divided by 700. That's correct. That's enough. OK, so we got the 0 0.016799. I don't know how many decimal digits they want. Normally, they want two for the standard deviation, or one, one for the mean and two for the standard deviation. It depends. OK, so I want to ask if you have any questions on problem 11. I have just a quick question. Yes. When you input it in the calculator, 
Um, you didn't put like times before that second parenthesis. Does that matter a lot? Uh, you mean right here? Yes. It doesn't. The calculator knows that if I don't put a symbol, it is multiplication. But I can um, show you that if we put parentheses, if we put multiplication symbol, it's not going to make any difference. It's not a mistake. It's a good question. The calculator knows that if you don't put anything, it assumes it's multiplication because for everything else you have to put it in. If it's addition, subtraction, or division, you have to put it in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was number 11. So let's browse through. I'm more interested in the uh, um, beginning of this, I like chapter 7, 8. To review because the rest I think um, is where I'm sending over the hat. Uh, this is the same type of problem. Okay. Okay, let's construct a 95 or 99 percent confidence interval. Okay, like problem 16. To refresh our memory on how to do that. For a confidence interval for population proportion. So in 16, they want 99%. So this is 16. 99% confidence interval uh, with x equals 240 and n equals 300. Lower bound and upper bound. So this is really no problem because we have. different ways of doing this with uh, statistics and tests and this is for proportion so we know it's one one um, it's uh, it's the interval one proportion z interval right here one proportion z interval and we have x which is 240 and we have n which is 300 and we want 0.99, exactly what we were asked. And this is it. So 0 0.74051 and 0 0.85949. So that's the confidence interval. The lower and the upper. Lower and the upper. So that was 16. Okay, let's see what else. Determine the t-value, that's from the table, but we don't have to use the table. So let's look at 18. Why not? Okay, so in 18, find the t-value such that the area in the right tail is this with 9, de nine degrees of freedom. So um, right tail, right tail, right tail area. 0.15 and degrees of freedom 9. How do we determine that? With distributions inf t. That's number 4. inf t area is 0.15 and degrees of freedom 9. Careful, careful here because we are going to get with what I entered, we're going to get a negative number, but we want the upper and the right tail, so we're going to ch have to change it into positive. Okay, careful. So I'm going to I'm going to show you the graph one more time. Let me just copy negative one point zero nine nine seven. So this number right here is 1.0997. So as you notice, with a normal distribution, it allows us to use the upper tail, the lower tail, right? But with a T, with inf T, it will automatically, as normally, as we've done for ages, but now these new calculators for um, normal distribution can allow both upper left 
and so on and so forth. But with a T, T distribution, they are automatically using the left tail. But in, since we are asked to determine this T value, it will be a positive T value for 9 degrees of freedom. Find the T value such that uh, the area in the right tail is this with 16, the same thing. Now for the left with 0.02 and 30 degrees, um, degrees of freedom and to right to say. So this is in the left is 0 0.02 and degrees of freedom they're saying 30. So now this is exactly what the calculator will give us with inf t. In yes, bad news is that not inf t is not in all calculators. Okay, with degrees of freedom 30. And this has to be a negative number. Yes, negative 2.1469. And um, find the critical T value that corresponds to 50% confidence, assume six degrees of freedom. See, 50% confidence so find the T value that corresponds to 50%, so which means that if this is 50%, then we have here 25% and we have here 25% and we are given degrees of freedom, what was the 6? Right? So I have to determine this. Again, I don't want, I don't know if they want the positive value or the negative value. It says run to three decimal places, but I write the final exam, it will be very clear to you what I want. So with the T inf T, The area to the left will be 0.25, degrees of freedom 6, and it's going to give us a negative value, and that would be negative 0.71755, and this will be 0.71755. So this is it, between this and this. It's not clear. This is, I created this uh, from the problems in your book, in your uh, lab, my lab math. So it's not clear, but it will be very clear which one I want if, if something like this will be. I know we're down to a couple of minutes. Uh, let me see if I, we have something quick. Yeah. Yeah, that's, let's look at 23. The null and the alternative are given. Determine whether the hypothesis test is a left tail test, right tail test, or two tail test on 23. That would be a right tail test. It would be a right tail test, of course. Of course. 